Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe added some things to Photoshop that make it very easy to change the colors of anything in a photograph. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to begin by working on an image where it's very easy to do. Then we're going to work on a second image where it's a little more difficult to change the colors of anything in this image. Then we're going to finish up with a third image where it's very difficult to change the colors. As we progress through these three images, I'll be demonstrating different tools and techniques that you could use so that you'll be able to do this to just about any type of photograph. Before I begin, though, I do have a favor to ask. If you find my YouTube videos of value, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and remember to click that little bell drop down so that when I post new videos, you will get notifications. Also, if you are interested in learning more about Photoshop, I have an entire course on Photoshop. I also have free mini courses and I have some other free downloads as well. I'll have all that linked in the description below this video. All right, let's begin by changing the colors on this very easy image. Let's say on this image, I want to change the color of the green on her sweater and of the background. Actually, before I do that, I should mention, I am in the photography workspace. If your Photoshop doesn't look like my Photoshop, go up to Window, down to Workspace, and down to Photography. Then your workspace should look more like mine, and hopefully you'll be better able to follow along. Okay, I mentioned I want to change the color of the green inner sweater and of the background. Very easy to do. Just grab a hue saturation adjustment layer. When you do that, you'll notice that there are seven color swatches along the top. These are the most prominent colors in the image. I want to change the background first, so I'm going to click on the yellow swatch. Go to the hue slider and just move it. And look at that. I changed the color of the background as easy as that. Now I want to change the color of this green. So I will click on the green swatch, and then I will change the color of the green. I also could add more saturation. I can make it lighter or darker. Let's make it darker. And that's it. That's as easy as that. This is the easiest kind of scenario you'll have. There's a before, and there's an after, there's a before, and there's an after. All right. You're not always, though, going to have a very easy situation like this. Sometimes it'll be a little more difficult. For example... Let's say I want to change the color of her top. So I'll get that hue saturation adjustment layer. I'll go to the red swatch because I want to change the red. And I'll go to the hue slider and you'll notice it's affecting her skin tone. What do we do? Well, what we'll need to do, let me get rid of this first, is what we'll need to do is get a selection of her top. Once we have a selection of her top, we could do an adjustment to just what is selected. To get the selection of her top, there's a relatively new tool in Photoshop that allows us to do this. The fourth two from the top are the selection tools. Now, right now, the quick selection tool is showing for me. But if I long press with the left mouse button, you can see there's three tools here. What we want is the object selection tool. Get that. When you do, you'll notice this little circle spinning, and it's telling us that it's finding objects in our image. Once it's done, click on Select People. Click on the person's face. If you had more than one person, you'd have more than one face here. Click on the person's face, and then you could click on and select different elements of that person. In this case, I mentioned I want to change the color of her top. Photoshop calls that upper close. Click on that, then click apply. Once you do that, you'll notice you have a selection now of her top. Let me come off the tool. You'll notice we have marching ants going around her top. That means her top is selected. You may have noticed when I applied that adjustment layer to the previous image that there was a mask with it. When you have a selection and you apply adjust an adjustment layer, the mask will automatically get masked to the selection. So if I get that U saturation adjustment layer, you'll notice that the mask now is masked. I don't even have to pick a color swatch up here because her top is uniformly red. All I need to do now is go to the U slider and change the color of her top. 
So it's pretty easy. And notice it's only affecting her top, not affecting everything else or anything else. What you do, though, you may run into, though, there could be an issue. A certain color you might pick, like this color, you could see there's some fringing around here. So the selection wasn't absolutely perfect, but it's good for most colors. So I could do a dramatic color change of her top like this, and maybe we'll make it a little lighter. Maybe not. So there's a before, and there's an after. There's a before. And there's an after. So that was a little more difficult. We had to select her top before we could change the color of it. Now, what about this third image? I want to change the color of her background and I want to change the color of her blue jeans. I want to make them non-blue jeans. All right. I want to make them different colors though. So if I just get that U saturation layer and I go to the blue swatch and I go to the hue slider, yeah, I'm changing the color of the background, but I'm changing the color of her jeans at the same time. I want to do this individually. So what we're going to do is get rid of this. Click this little garbage can right here. What we'll do first is we'll select the background. Now, there's all different ways you could do this. What I like to do is select the subject. You could click on the contextual taskbar. You can see I have mine pinned here so it doesn't move around. To do that, you could click these uh, three little dots and you could pin the bar position. That's what I do. Um, that's what I probably would do. Another way you could do it is you could go up here to select and select the subject. But I just want to show you something. If you grab one of those three selection tools, again, just hit the keyboard shortcut W and you'll get any of those three selection tools. It doesn't matter which one you get um, as long as you get one of these three selection tools. When you do up here, you'll have select subject. So it's the same thing as if I click the button or I went to the menu. But the reason why I'm showing you this is if you go to this little drop down right here, by default, Yours will be on device, quicker results. If you don't mind sending your image up to Amazon servers, use cloud details results. It will do a much better job of selecting the subject. You can see mine is defaulted to that because I have a preference changed so that mine defaults to that. To change preferences or that specific preference, if you have a Mac, go to the Photoshop 2025 menu and down to settings if you have a pc it's under the edit menu once you go down to settings go down to image processing when you go to image processing at the very top you'll see that select subject and remove background i have mine on cloud detailed results click ok so now i don't have to go to this drop down i could click select subject and it doesn't matter if i select subject on the contextual tax bar or I go up to the menu, it will always use the cloud to do it. So you can see we have our selection of the subject. Next thing we want to do is we need to refine this and invert it. To do that, go to Select and Mask. If you're on a different tool, just go to one of the selection tools. Or again, you could get to Select and Mask by going up to Select and then down to Select and Mask. Once you do that, you'll be in this dialog. Now, what I like to do is use, most often, use the on black view. But when you do, you need to take, I like to do at least, take the opacity up to 100. First thing I'll do is refine her hair. You can see her hair doesn't look quite right. So click this little button right here to refine her hair and you'll see it improve. The next thing I do is go down here and click on decontaminate colors. And you'll see her hair improved even more. So it's a good selection. But I mentioned we need to invert it because we're going to change the color of the background. We're not going to change the color of the person. So to do that, go down here and click invert. And now we have our proper selection. Go down here and click OK. Now you'll notice that by default what will happen is I used specifically um, a layer mask. So it has layer mask, but it, it turns off the background layer. You can turn back on the background layer. So we have our person there. But now we want to do a hue saturation adjustment layer that's only going to affect this top layer that has the mask on it. To do that, Go to the Use Saturation Adjustment layer. Then click this little icon at the bottom. What this little icon will do is it will clip it to the layer directly below it so that any adjustment we do now will only affect the layer below it and won't affect anything below that. So we'll go to that blue swatch and we can change the color of the background. Let's go maybe something like that. All right. You notice her shadow doesn't look quite right. What you could do is go down here to this um, kind of range that we are selecting, and we could kind of fix the range a little bit, and that looks pretty good. So what we've done now is we've changed 
the color of the background, and her pants haven't changed. Now, we need to do something so that we're going to change the color of her pants. Before we do that, though, we need to get a stamp layer on top or flatten all these layers. To flatten all the layers, you could go up to um, Layer, then down to Flatten Image, right here. Another another way, though, if you don't want to flatten all the layers, is you could put a stamp layer on top. And there isn't a menu item for this. There's just a convoluted keyboard shortcut. On a Mac, it's Shift, Option, Command, E. On a PC, it's Shift, Control, Alt, E. Or Shift, Alt, Control, E. So again, on a Windows computer, it's Shift, Alt, Control, E. On a Mac, it's Shift, Option, Command, E. And then we have the stamp layer on top. Now we're going to again get the object selection tool, let it find the person. Once it finds the person, then we're going to go to select people. We're going to click on the person's face. We're going to click on lower clothes. So it's just selecting her clothes, at the, you know, her lower clothes. Click apply. So we have that selection. We'll go to hue, saturation, adjustment layer. You can pick the color swatch if you want, but you really don't have to. And now we could change the color of her jeans. Now you'll notice her shoes look kind of funky, right? We need to clean up her shoes. To do that, we're again going to put a stamp layer on top, or you could flatten it again. But again, the stamp layer, in case I screwed up when I said it before, a Windows computer is Shift, Alt, Control, E, and a Mac at Shift, Option, Command, E. On my website, I have a full list of all the keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop. It's a free PDF that you could download and print at home. So that may help you find these keyboard shortcuts. So we have this layer here. Now, again, we're going to use the object selection tool. We're going to go to select people. We're going to click on the person's face and we're going to click on shoes. We're going to click apply. So I have just a selection of her shoes. Now we'll again go to the use saturation adjustment layer and we're going to take saturation down. So we're making her shoes look more normal. Brighten them up a little bit. So that's that. So we did a very complex color change with this image. Here's a before and an after and a before and an after. So I hope everything I've gone over in this video will help you be able to change the color of just about anything in any photo. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.